making the transition from open or mini open arthroscopic rotator cuff repairs to the all arthroscopic rotator cuff repair is a very rewarding transition for surgeons. Our patient today is a 59 year old right hand dominant lady who slipped and fell. Her clinical examination demonstrated weakness of external rotation as well as forward elevation, a positive impingement sign, uh, and a preoperative magnetic resonance scan demonstrates a tear involving the supraspinatus and at least the upper edge of the infraspinatus with approximately 1.5 centimeters of retraction. And so we're expecting preoperatively uh, more of a crescent type tearing of the rotator cuff involving the supraspinatus and leading edge of the infraspinatus. A couple of points about the setup. This patient is set up in what we call the beach chair position. She is sitting up uh, so that her shoulder is at approximately 60 degrees with respect to the floor. In this position, the patient needs to have a stabilized torso and a stabilized head so they, they do not move through the surgical procedure. Once the patient is positioned and prepped, marking out the landmarks is critical to making sure that the rest of the procedure goes well. The way that I perform this is I begin with the notch that occurs between the clavicle and the spine of the scapula. This notch is critical because this marks the midway point of the acromion. And therefore, you, once you know this site, you know the front and the back or the anterior and posterior distance of your acromion. So we go from this point here and then we find the anterior aspect of the acromion and the posterior aspect of the acromion. And by marking out those three points, the rest of the surgical landmarks can be completely identified. The AC joint is a, another uh, landmark that comes directly off of this notch. So if you find that notch and move slightly anterior, that's your AC joint. We can then feel for the coracoid process and we can draw our coracoacromial ligament and then we'll mark out our portals. We'll have a standard posterior portal, which is usually two centimeters down and one centimeter over from the posterior lateral corner. We'll draw out our standard anterior portal, which is just lateral to the coracoid process. And we'll draw our standard lateral portal. And I just want to call your attention to where I've drawn this. This is about two to three centimeters below the edge of the acromion. And this may seem a little low, uh, at this time. But as the shoulder distends and the fluid starts to bring apart the soft tissues, what happens is the actual position of this portal seems to move up. And what you want to avoid is you want to avoid having to go down underneath the acromion and back up to perform your surgical procedure. That makes it much more difficult. So this portal needs to start a little bit lower than uh, you might feel comfortable at first, but this is very helpful in making sure that you're always working underneath the acromion. Now the last portal that I marked out is at the anterior lateral aspect of the acromion. This portal, which we call the accessory portal, the accessory anterior lateral portal, is very valuable for arthroscopic rotator cuff repairs, but particularly so for patients that are this operation is performed in the beach chair position. In the beach chair position, we use this portal as our suture management portal. This is the portal that we frequently can put anchors through. We'll frequently put suture uh, passing through and we'll tie our sutures all through this portal while we're looking from the lateral portal. We will go ahead and place a local anesthetic at each of our portal sites. This helps both with hemostasis and to ensure uh, that, that we have a good pain relief for our patients. So we'll start with our standard posterior portal. We just make a nick in the skin. We're then gonna go down bluntly our, we have a blunt tip in our trocar. We'll go down bluntly, and what we'd like to do is feel for the humeral head. Gently feel for the humeral head. We then also want to feel for the glenoid, and we want to make sure we don't go too far medially or we'll be on the back of the scapula. So we'll come back to feel for the humeral head, feel for the glenoid. So once we know where the humerus is and where the glenoid is, then we can just bluntly push through, and we usually feel a pop and we're inside of the glenohumeral joint. We'll open this up, and we see fluid coming out, so that's a good sign that we are, in fact, in the glenohumeral joint. Once we're in the joint, we'll take a minute, even without uh, turning the flow on, just to make sure that we're in the intraarticular space, 
And since we have a fair amount of, of joint fluid in this shoulder, we're not going to get very good visualization without our fluid inflow.